Hey, Blender Bob here. So light groups are out in Blender 3.2 Alpha. So it's an alpha version. It's not finished yet, but still, let's take a look at it. But first I want to explain to you what is the difference between light groups and light linking. This is how light linking works in Maya and it's really simple. You got this relationship editor here and now I'm in light centric, which means the light will decide which object I want it to affect. So if I take the red light here, I can say I don't want it to light the plane. I don't want it to light the sphere. I don't want it to light the car. So I can just turn on and off the objects as I want. And if I select the car, it's gonna affect all the objects that are parented to that group. Same thing for the green here. So I can turn everything on and off as needed. If I expand it here, you can see that I also get all the shading groups, which means I can affect the light per shading group. So I could say, for example, I want the red light to only affect the car body. So it doesn't affect anything else. You can also go object centric. In this case, it's the opposite. You select an object and you decide which light is gonna affect it. So the plane, I don't want the red, I don't want the green. So it's not lit by anything, the sphere. So as you can see, it's a very simple interface. It's, it works the way your brain works. I mean, I wanna connect this with this and that's it, you do it. You don't need to go into some menus and click some stuff and no, 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 it's, it's super simple and very easy to use. And you know, that's the way to go, right? Now, light linking will work on a single render layer. That means that all these links that you do will output into one layer. Light groups will output the light groups into different, uh, different layers. So you will have one light group into one layer, another light group into another layer, another light group into another layer. So that gives you more power in compositing. The first thing you need to do is to go into compositing and turn on use nodes. Otherwise it's just not gonna work. Back into layout, I will select my green light, go into properties here and you see in shading, you got light groups. So you press on the plus, it's grayed out, but it's still gonna work. And now you get a light group that has been created. So I will rename it, uh, let's call it uh, green light. Now I will do the same thing with my red light. So here I got light group. How come it's light group? I renamed it green light here. Hmm. So I create a new layer. Now I got light group and I got green light. Okay, let's go back to the red one in the list. Now I get the green light and I get light group. So it looks like there's a bug here. You need to create a new layer to confirm the name change. It's okay. We're still in alpha. No problem. Okay. So I created a red light. So I got my green light and ah, of course the same thing. I need to create a new layer to confirm the name. Click on the little plus and let's check it out. Okay. So I got my red and I got my green and I got the empty one that I don't need. I'll check here just to verify. Yeah, everything is good. All right. Let's start a render. And now if I go back into the compositing, you can see I got my empty light group here. I got my green light and I got my red light. So if I look at them, this one's empty, green light and red light. So now I need to do a little bit of compositing. I'm going to create a mix node and I'm going to connect the green light and the red light together. So here and here, I'm going to change the mix mode to add because we want to add them together. Add, 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 there you go. And now you see, I got the same result as the original. Oh no, it's not the same because this one has the environment light in. Okay, so we're gonna fix that. We're gonna put the environment light into another light group. So I go back to my layout here. You go here in the environment and light group here. You can select which light group that you want. It's this one here. I will rename it uh, world. Don't forget to press the little plus here to confirm the name. This is only because it's an alpha. You won't have to do this when it's released for sure. Okay, so I start another render. The render is gone, compositing. And now you see I got my layer right here, world. And if you turn down the node wrangler add-on, you can go on the node here and just press control shift to shuffle between one and another. Okay, let's come this one too. I'm gonna to create another mixed node. I'm gonna select this one here, the output, and I'm gonna get my new layer here. Also put it as an add, 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 add. Here we go. And now if I take a look at it, it looks like the original. While well, the difference is the original has the gray background behind it, but they look exactly the same. You can see that you can add light groups to objects too. So I got my plane here and in shading, you can see that I have light groups and I can select any light group that I want, but it does absolutely nothing at this point. So I presume that this is the base for light linking. That's the setup they want to do for light linking. So everything that's in red group will be rendered. If not, it will just be black. There's another thing I wonder about this light group system is that a light can only be into one light group at a time. Well, what if I need it into more than one? What can I do? So right now you can put multiple lights into a light group, but you cannot put a light into multiple light groups. I seriously hope that they will work on the interface on the way it works, because on a huge scene, this is not gonna work well. Imagine if you have hundreds of lights and you have thousands of objects, 
you will not have a clear view of what is going on. You don't have a graphical interface that tells you what is connected to what. So maybe it could be something like in the outliner, you could have a, a, new, a new view in the outliner that would say light groups, and in the light group, well, then you can see all the lights that are in it and all the objects that are in it, and you could easily move them up and down and drag stuff. I don't know, it's just a suggestion. Now, let's say you have this huge scene and you have hundreds of lights and you have thousands of objects. How can you manage this right now? Well, you can use the old render layers, and this is what we've been using since, uh, since forever, since beginning of time. Let me show you a real life example. This is a test scene that we did at the office, and very soon I will do a blender bob about crowd scenes. You can see that everything has been put into collections, so we get everything clean. So now if I change to another layer, you see I got a lot of choices here, so I will change to another one, it takes a long time to refresh because it's a very heavy scene, but eventually here we go. So that's the other light set. And you can see only the lights are turned on for what I need. So if I take, for example, the spot tower lights, well, then I click on it. Again, it takes a long time to refresh, a lot of stuff to load, all the lights. I keep it in real time. I didn't edit it just to show you how painful it is to work on this shot because it's so heavy. There's uh, like 200,000 people in the room. It's uh, very, very, very long. So, yeah, I'm running out of things to say. Okay, here we go. And now it's updating. Come on. All right, here we go. And you see the lights are starting to get brighter and brighter as it renders. But all the lights on the side, you see, I just turn on and off what I need. So I do it per render layer. So at the end, these are the render layers, all the beauty passes, and we also did a pass for the fog, and that was done in Eevee actually because it was so much faster, and we mixed both of them together. Oh, by the way, I did a clip about that, it's called Lighting in Compositing, go check it out, link is right there. And there's the Cryptomat. And for sure somebody will ask me in the comments, why do you do your compositing in Nuke, why you don't do it in Blender? Well, that's because of all that stuff that needs to be done to comp this, and... I doubt that Blender could support all that stuff because it's kind of complex and very, very heavy. If we compare the two methods using light groups or using layers, well, the good thing is that with the light groups, it renders all of them at the same time. But with layers, it has to render one layer after the other and that takes forever. But the bad thing about the light groups is that it's kind of messy because you don't have a user interface like you had in Maya for light linking that really clearly shows you everything that's connected to what. So you can have tons of light groups and you can have thousands of objects and there's no easy way to see what is connected to what. Also, you cannot preview it. You have to do a render to see the results. You cannot go up here and say, I want to see the red light group. It just doesn't work this way yet. I'm sure it's going to change. It has to. As for using render layers, well, that's easy. You just change render layers and you're going to see exactly what you're going to get. But as I was showing you, it takes a long time when the scenes are super heavy. So there you go. Now you know about light linking. It's not in Blender yet, but it's coming. Light groups, work in progress, or working with render layers. You pick the solution that's going to be the best for you for whatever you do. All right. Cheers.